So hello everyone, welcome again to another video from EGIS Associates. Today we're going to kind of continue on with the last video we did and talk more about GIS certification. Specifically, we're going to look at the GISP certification and talk about, you know, what is it, where did it come from, what direction is it going, and those kind of things to, to really help you make a better choice on, you know, is this a certification you want to pursue? So what is GISP? What is the GIS professional certification? Well, as we talked about in the last video, we mentioned there were two types of certification. You had professional certification and technical certification. Well, GISP is a professional certification. It is managed by the GIS Certification Institute or GISCI, uh, which you can find out more at their website, www.giscci.org. And this was first developed, the, the certification itself was developed in 2003 by ERISA, the Urban and Regional Information Systems Association. They had been working on creating a professional certification for the GIS industry for several years, going back uh, into the late 90s, and trying to determine how do you certify somebody in a field that has such a wide breadth of reach. And it, it took many years for them to, to come up with what is now the GISP. ERISA, however, didn't want it just to be a ERISA certification. While many people still call the GISP the ERISA certification or think it belongs to ERISA, it doesn't. ERISA spun off the GISP cert and worked to create the GISCI in 2004 so that the GISP would be a true industry certification and not just linked to a single professional body. So what they did when they formed GISCI is invited multiple professional organizations to be part of that body so that you wouldn't have competing certifications in the field which would dilute the GISP, um, also cause confusion within the industry, and so on. And what ERISA originally developed was a portfolio-based certification, meaning that there wasn't an exam. You just had to show certain amounts of experience, education, and professional contributions in order to achieve that exam. Uh, since the GISCI has taken over and been managing this since 2004, they have very recently implemented an exam onto that certification. So who is the GISCI? What are these other bodies that, that are part of the GIS Certification Institute? Well, of course, ERISA is one of the founding members, so it is uh, part of GISCI. We also have the Association of American Geographers, or AAG. We have the University Consortium of Geographic Information Science, or UCGIS. We have the Geospatial Information and Technology Association, GEDA, and the National States Geographic Information Council, or NISGIC, are all members of GISCI. So all of these various GIS-related professional organizations have come together to manage, promote, and grow the GISP certification so that we don't have all these competing certifications from the various organizations. So what that means is since the GISP was first introduced, we now have over 6,800 active GISPs. That was as of August 1st, 2018, uh, with the new exam cycle just getting started or probably finishing up actually. You know, we're going to see that number continue to, to grow. And GISP is not just a U.S. centric certification. It actually is an international certification. We have GISPs, of course, in the U.S., but we also have them up in Canada, in Australia, in India, in, uh, throughout countries in Europe, and even into to Africa. So really, you can find GISPs worldwide. So what are the requirements? If you wanted to get your GISP, what, what do you have to do? Well, first, because it is a professional certification, you must have four years of full-time equivalent experience, meaning you have to have worked in the profession doing GIS work for at least, at least four years of full-time equivalency. Now, that doesn't mean 
you just have to do it in four years. You can spread that out. So if you only work part time doing GIS, maybe you're a planner. And so only half of your time is spent doing GIS. Well, then it might take you eight years to reach the four year full time equivalency. But it is still possible. Uh, you can also count in any internships and things where you're working, again, maybe in a part time basis towards that full time equivalency. It's just got to be an equivalent of four years of working full time on GIS related activities. The second component of that is the portfolio. So you have to complete a portfolio that shows that you have a, achieved a certain minimum amount of education, a certain minimum amount of experience and made professional contributions. And we do that on a points scheme. So you have to have achieved a total of 150 points spread out across those three areas. And in future videos, we'll talk more about those specifics and those um, three areas and what you need to do to meet those requirements. Uh, but that'll be coming later. You also have to agree to follow a code of ethics and a rules of conduct. So this is our, our guiding documents that kind of explain what you can and can't do as a GIS professional. And as of 2015, you also have to pass an exam. So you'll have to go and take that exam. It's somewhere around typically, I think 180 questions. You get something like four hours to complete it uh, and so on. And again, we'll talk more about the exam in a future video. So to actually go through that process, you're going to go to the GISCI website and register. So you go there, you create a user account. There is no cost to do that. There is no worries. You just go on, you create your user account, and that allows you to begin capturing information about your career progress, right? So you can go ahead and start entering in information on your education. Did you get a degree? Uh, did you go take a GIS workshop? Uh, those kind of things. You can start putting in your experience. You know, I was a GIS technician at Acme Engineers or something like that. Again, begin that process of filling out the portfolio and just filling that stuff out. Again, cost you no money. It doesn't start any sort of time ticker on when you have to finish things. Just by putting that in, you're, you're just getting it yourself started, right? But it, it doesn't, there's no cost, no worried about, oh, I've got a, I've started my, my account. Now I only have, I have the six years to complete the process. No, that that's not, you can go ahead and start now. And 10 years from now, if you think you're ready and you want to start the actual process, that's, that's when you do it, right? You can start doing it. Now, once you start the process of actually getting certified, this is where you pay the application fee that hundred dollar fee. Uh, and then you either go to take the exam or you submit your portfolio for review. That starts a clock, a six year window in which you have to complete the entire process. So what we expect or, or what I think is probably going to happen, uh, for those people just getting into the GIS field, you know, they're coming out of school with a degree. So they're probably going to go and take that exam first. They're going to go ahead while all that knowledge and, and theory that they learned in college is still fresh in their mind. They're going to go pay that $250 fee to go take the exam. Then they have six years from the time they take that exam to go ahead and get the portfolio done, getting those the four years of FTE completed, getting the other educational professional contributions, all of those things that are required finished. And in six years, that should be more than su sufficient to, to accomplish all that without a problem. So once they've done that, once they have uh, completed the exam and you've completed the portfolio and you've done it in that six year window, then you're certified. You're, you have earned your GISP certification. Of course, once you get it, you still have to maintain it. And there'll be an annual renewal fee of $95 per year. The first year you get certified, you don't have to pay the $95. It's just every year after that. And then every three years, you actually have to update your portfolio to show that you've met the ongoing education requirements, experience requirements, and professional contribution requirements. There's no fee for that recertification because you're paying the annual fee for renewal, 
but that's just to recertify, to, to verify that you are keeping your credential up, right? That you're making sure that you're staying up on industry trends, new technologies, and, and those kind of things, right? As is part of being a professional, that's what you, you have to do. So that's the, the general process of earning your certification. As I said, in future videos, we'll talk in greater detail about all the specific parts like the education requirement and experience and professional contributions, as well as the exam. But that's just the, the basic process for you. What GISCI is now working towards is accreditation for the GISP. When GISP was first developed in the late 90s, early 2000s, there wasn't a whole lot of standardization or best practices on how you create a certification. You, you kind of took your best stab at it and did the best you could and had your certification. Well, since GISP has come along, there's actually been published best practices on how you develop a certification, how do you grow the certification, how do you maintain the certification from several bodies, such as the National Commission for Certifying Agencies uh, or the Institute for Credentialing Excellence. Of course, ANSI and ISO also have published guidelines along those uh, are for certification. And GISCI has been working diligently to align the GISP certification with the criteria and the best practices of these bodies. And so their next step for GISP is to get it accredited by one or more of these bodies, which then should add further value and acceptance of the GISP certification. So hopefully we'll be hearing from uh, GISCI very soon on the status of the accreditation and achieving the accreditation for GISP. But uh, I said they're, they're working on that. And it was something that did not exist at the time GISP was first created. So there you have it. That's pretty much the, the basics of the GISP in a, a nutshell. So hopefully you found some good information from this. As I said, we'll have future videos with more information about the GISP as well as other certifications going forward. And of course, remember, uh, EGIS Associates, we're here to really help you consume that power of place to make use of spatial technologies within your business practices with analysis and, and so on, right? So we're here. You need help with your enterprise implementation, we can do that for you. You need systems integration with other uh, solutions, we can help with that. Strategic planning, you know, with Arc Pro coming down the pike, I know a lot of folks are trying to figure out how they're going to implement Arc Pro. How does that impact their current data storage and workflows? So we can certainly help you with that. If you need rent -a tech services for on-site or remote staff, we can do that for you. And of course, training and support. We're always here to help. Well, if you have any questions about the, the GISP certification uh, or other GIS related certifications, please feel free to reach out to us. Leave a comment down below. Uh, make sure if you like the video to give us a thumbs up. And of course, if you want to continue to get notifications as new videos are posted, make sure you subscribe to our channel. So hope you've had a good one. We look forward to seeing you in the next video. 